I know what you're thinking. Isn't this a Nissan Z film? That's not a Nissan Z. And you're right. We will be talking about the Z, but we're going to put it in its place using this car. This is the Toyota GR86 owned by Everyday Driver. Paul and I both own our own sports cars. He likes Porsches. I like Lotus. We have them at our houses. But we realized that we both liked the GR86 and wanted to compare it to enough things that we really ought to buy one. So we did. We bought this one. You will also say we've been bought off by Toyota. No, it's actually the other way around. We bought this and pay the money for this. This topped out fully loaded at 34. That included tax title license, everything. We put wheels on it. Otherwise, we're leaving it stock so that we can talk about it against a lot of other sports cars, and that includes the Nissan Z. Is this 82% as good as the Z, or maybe it's the other way around? Great cars, great roads, and all the reasons we love to drive. TV, web, and podcast. This is Everyday Driver. When we bought this GR86, you guys asked about all of the other alternatives we could have bought, and one of the ones you brought up, of course, was the Nissan Z. Well, many of you have said, you shouldn't have bought the GR86. You should have waited for the Z car. Well, here it is, finally. The new Nissan Z, it's 400 horsepower, it's twin turbo, it's V6, and it has a manual. Yeah, that car sounds much better on paper, but is it more fun? one thing we know for sure, it is significantly faster than that 86. You've just seen it. This car has 400 horsepower, 350 pound-feet of torque. That is worlds more than the 86 and significantly more than the prior Z, the 370. Numbers are the key because you see 400 horsepower and you think now it's got a proper amount of power. Every time I get in it and you mash the gas, it's like a giant hand reached down from outer space and picked you up stuffed you into one of those Civil War cannons and shot you into the next county. This is the twin-turbo V6 3-liter from the Infiniti Red Sport 400. There's no longer any numbers required for the Z. It's just the Z. Look, you get a six-speed manual in your sports car. From the moment they announced it, everybody went, yeah, that's the spec sheet that you want. The problem is you can't drive a spec sheet. They're good for bragging rights. It doesn't necessarily tell you if the car's good, though. This is the premium model. There's the premium, and there's the sport. And what you're getting is the LSD in the rear, you get the bigger brakes up front, and the gear ratios are exactly like the 370Z. The 370Z is chassis number Z34. And so is this one. This is also the Z34 chassis. Theoretically, it should get better. Every time you change generations, whether or not you're starting with the prior platform, the car should get better. As informative as it is to drive the new Z, what's revelatory is to get into this prior one, the 370, and you really see how Nissan has taken the same exact bones and made a revised car. This is a 2017 car. It's been modified with an exhaust, but good thing the power is exactly the same. It's stock. First introduced in 2009, this car has been around, well, <clears throat> a long time. And the 370 is built on many of the parts of the 350. So that means that the new Z has bones that are two generations back in tech. And a lot of it is roughly the same. This references every other Datsun or Nissan Z car. You can see the 280 in the headlights. You can see the Z32 in the taillights. The proportions are, are, of course, the 350 and the 370. Everywhere you look, you can find something. The grille up front, the Datsuns, had the same thing, but they were covered over by a protruding exterior bumper, so it didn't appear to be as large as it does on this car. 
I think there is a more interesting, fresher styling that never got touched. They felt tied, and I'm sure were mandated, to make it look like a 240 and to reference every Z they could, and this is the result. This, to my eye, looks five to eight years old already. It looks good, but Nissan couldn't make it forward thinking, so everything about it looks to the past. One of the places that is most revolutionary is actually this interior. The vents, the doors, everything's been a little tweaked on the bones of the last version, but it all feels impressive and updated and premium. The worst problem in here is actually the seats and the seating position. I'm not sitting nearly low enough. I am as low as the seat will go, and I still feel like I need to be two or three inches lower in the car. I'm good. I've got a couple inches above my head, and the seating position is very good. The seats, I feel like, could be more supportive. They're okay. The seat is not long enough. Now, if that's because Nissan figured you'd be doing a lot of dancing on pedals, well, fine, but I immediately noticed it. It's like I'm sitting in two thirds of a seat. It should be longer, but it can't because it's built on the 370Z platform. It was not a fresh start. Because this is naturally aspirated, this is a significantly larger engine than what's in the new Z. This is a 3.7 liter V6. The new one is a three liter, but turbos make all the difference. This is down 68 horsepower and 80 pound feet of torque from the new Z. Of course, the thing you notice immediately is no turbos. But I'm also intrigued that the car feels lighter. Most 370s are not this loud, but they do have this kind of power delivery, which is really wonderful. That big naturally aspirated engine has a little bit of personality when you work with it. With a naturally aspirated engine at altitude up in the mountains, almost 9,000 feet, you just have to do a little bit more waiting. There's the power. One of the things I noticed right away is that this gearbox definitely feels different than the one in the new Z. They've refined it so that the shifting feel in the new one is better, and it is. The, the shifting feel, rev match. Yep, rev match still there. Works very well on these cars too. The shifting feel in the new Z is better than this, and it's easier to find gears but I like the clutch take up more in this older car. Listen to that. It sounds great. It whines, it wails at the top end. That is a lot of power and a wonderful howl. This car in the cabin has a great sound. It's not quite as good outside the cabin on the sheer exhaust. You hear it go by. It's not as grand as it sounds in here. That's flat. Okay. I'm not paying attention to anything else. It doesn't need more power than this. We're good. What that's done is just make the car entirely about power. But along with that power, you have to add everything else to the car to manage that properly. Everything else, well, except for the brakes, hasn't really been designed to keep up. I kind of feel like we've been given a GT car and I wasn't expecting that. This 370 is 150 pounds lighter than the new Z. The difference is that unbelievable turbo power in the new one just mutes all of the added weight. But this has hydraulic steering though, which is very interesting. A 13 to one ratio in here, which is a faster ratio than the one in the new Z. This should be more nimble. I'm not really feeling that, but on turn in, the car doesn't feel like I'm throwing its weight from side to side. It just feels more planted. More planted and a little bit less interesting. This 370 has different dampers and spring rates than the new one. The flightiness that's apparent in the new Z isn't really here. They, they feel related, but the new car feels more up on its toes and a little bit less grounded than this 370 does. Some of the moves this car makes seem a little bit 
more intuitive than the new Z. Everyday Driver is brought to you by Covercraft. Use the code EVERYDAY22 for 10% off your order. I was starting to wonder if they were going to do a new Z. When Nissan announced they were going to update their entire lineup, I honestly didn't think the Z would be part of it. I thought they would just look at the future of EVs and go, we gotta let the Z go. But they didn't. They have released a 400 horsepower, rear wheel drive, six speed sports car into the current car climate. That is bold. I appreciate the history of a car as much as anybody. I love legacies and generations of cars. We're known for shooting generations. But what the Z represents is Nissan still being committed to sports cars and fun driving. What that tells you is how much power the Z car name has and how important it is to the perception of Nissan. So while this is an improvement over the 370Z, it's not alone in modern sports cars. In fact, here's the one we bought. On paper, the Nissan beats this handily in every category. The wheelbase is shorter, so therefore it should rotate sooner. It's got way, way more power, bigger brakes. It's faster, the shifts are great. It should win. But it's been a long time since I have experienced what we have said from the very beginning of Everyday Driver, and that is you cannot drive a spec sheet. The last couple generations of the Z car have prided themselves on being somewhat affordable, available for around 30 grand. And that's what we expected when this car was announced. The sport trim is $40,000. The performance trim like this one is $50,000. And of course this has bells and whistles and delivery and all kinds of stuff, making it 53 grand. We could have had the sport version against that GR86. The GR86 comes with a mechanical limited slip differential. To get that on the Z car, and you can now, it requires the performance trim. The sport trim and the performance trim have no changes as far as power and transmission and what's going on otherwise in the suspension. So from a performance driving perspective, this is the same as that GR86. This doesn't really compare by virtue of the engine. It's way down on power. The Z has almost double the horsepower of this car, so therefore it should be more fun. If the primary thing you're shopping for when you buy your fun car is lots of power, well then you still can't shop here. I mean, this is incredibly improved from the first generation 86. And when you consider how little this car weighs, it actually feels really good now. And when I put my foot to the floor, it feels like, okay, it's got a decent amount of power and I can just use it. I'm kind of happy being at the back of the pack. The power has increased on this car enough for me to truly love it. This Z car got 150 pounds heavier than the 370Z, but it's 700 pounds heavier than the GR86. It feels heavy, it drives heavy. Here I was expecting light, crisp, clean sushi prepared with ninja swords, a lighter, sharper, more involving car. But you can feel the weight and you can feel the compromise. There's significant roll and dive in this car. You get on the brakes and the nose drops. You chuck it into a corner and it rolls. It rolls quite a bit. I don't feel like the suspension has been designed to accommodate the speeds that you can carry. It's too soft. Highways, freeways, back roads, it's very comfortable. But as soon as you pitch it into a corner, oh, you gotta back off. The weight puts the Z in contention with cars like the Mustang or the Camaro, more so than cars like the Supra or the GR86. Getting back into this car is like jumping into a cold pool on a hot summer day. It is refreshing. 
I get back in this and I'm feeling the car, I'm feeling the road, I'm looking at my line and I'm just playing. Whereas the Z car feels like a hammer and I must smash and it can. A 700 pound weight difference is a lot. You feel it in every single input of this car. This 86 also does a better job of body control than the Z does, in spite of not having double wishbones. This has a strut front suspension, and it shouldn't feel as good to drive as the Z does. And it feels better. It doesn't corner as fast. The initial turn in on the Z is even more aggressive than it is in this 86. It's when you get this car out here and you start to just hang on through corners, the car gets light, goes over the bump, and then you just settle into the tires. Ah. This 86 comes with Michelin PS4s on, on the stock wheels. When we put these gold wheels on and got summer tires from our friends at Bridgestone, it now has a new tire from them called the Potenza Sport that is their direct competitive tire to the PS4. And interestingly enough, the Z car also comes with Bridgestones on the performance package from the factory. I feel much more down in this car. I feel like I'm a part of it, and the steering feel and the weight of everything I have to interact with as a driver is perfect. It's very hard to do it better than the interactions in this 86. That's what I want a sports car to do. I find that in Porsches. I've found that in buckets in this car. This 86 feels light and engaging and involving in a way that the Z just can't seem to match. By now, you've probably searched something along the lines of GR86 engines blow up. <laughs> and you've also you've probably heard the viral story about the owner who took his autocrossing and the engine did indeed fail and warranty issues ensued. But as of right now, we have driven this 10,000 hard miles and we've had no issues with it. And you will be the first to know when we do. Now we do know that excess RTV collecting the oil pickup tube, that is an actual thing that's happening on these cars. It happened on the first gen as well. However, the number of cases where that issue has caused actual engine problems and broken cars, that number is still really small. Now it may grow and we will follow it just like you will. But that one warranty issue that got denied, that, that was a dealer issue because once it got to Toyota corporate, Toyota corporate honored the warranty. That means that it's another case where the internet fear is far worse than the reality. What about that? We are not dropping the oil pan in this car. <laughs> There's the potential that more warranty issues could ensue. So for right now, what are we doing? Guess what? We're going to keep driving the car. We're going to keep driving it hard. Lots more videos to share with all of you. If you're a person that is saying these cars blow up and you're staying away from them, at this point, really, all you're doing is just depriving yourself of a great driving car. Use autotempest.com slash everyday to find all the cars in one search. If you're a Z enthusiast, if you love Nissans, I really think you're going to like this car. But you can't tell me, let's just throw more money at it and throw parts at it to do the thing you really want it to do. Short of the Nismo model, which will probably have more power and it'll hopefully handle better. This one should be amazing. But I have to keep reminding myself, this is the 370 underneath. Nissan went really far, but I wanted them to reduce weight and go farther with the handling. I can't believe that Nissan made this car. I'm thrilled they made this car. I love having a Z with this engine. I wish this car were more fun. I wish it were more laugh inducing. I don't fit in it well enough, which is disappointing. And I don't enjoy it in corners as much as I do that GR86. We could have waited for that Z car. We could have waited to get it. It's the newest, hottest thing. You wouldn't believe the looks that car gets and the nostalgia that that car brings. So what should you shop for? You've got to get to know yourself as a driver and what you like the most. Is it drag races? The Z is going to be compelling because when you get into the turbos in the Z, it throws you back. And that brings me back to the Mustang. Because I think this Z car is Nissan's GT350 Mustang. 
Nissan has an amazing motor in this three liter twin turbo V6 at 400 horsepower, a great motor. And so they put it with a chassis they already had. In this case, it's the prior Z car, the Z34 chassis. And they put those together and they change the suspension components and a lot of the setup in order for that chassis to handle this engine. And they made a car where the engine is kind of the point, heavier than it should be, softer than it should be in the corners, but they've made a showcase piece for that great engine. If your idea of a fun car, a sports car, is something that comes to life, it's dynamic at every corner, it makes you laugh, and you can't believe that you own it, the Nissan Z is not that car. I wanted something different. I wanted just a little bit more sharp, interesting car information or road information. It's not here. I want to just shake my head through corners in disbelief at how good a car handles and how fun it is. And personally, I'm not all the way there with the Z. I'm very impressed. I like it and I can't believe how well Nissan's done with old parts and a new crazy engine. I really wanted this Z to make me rethink the GR86 purchase. In spite of the price difference, I thought I would love to get in the Z car and be like, everyone should own that. But this is more muscle car than canyon carving sports car. I don't find it nearly as fun as the GR86, and I don't find it to be light and interesting enough for my tastes. When it comes to sports cars, you find something you really love, get it now live in the now get this experience now and that's what the gr86 does for us we could have waited we didn't and i think we did it right